Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I want to go over everything you guys need to know here today on AMC stock. On Friday, AMC was down about 2.5%. Now, we know nothing matters until the court ruling happens. Now, there's a very real possibility in this upcoming week that could actually happen. Now, I actually expected this to happen last week. I expected it to happen a long time ago. I, I, I didn't really expect this to get dragged on for so long as a lot of the short sellers did not as well. And that's potentially a huge problem for the shorts because cost to borrow fees are not exactly your friend as of right now. We're going to get into all of this information and much more. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. Let me tell you guys right now, too, if you want to come trade with me live in real time, join a community of great, great members as well as just awesome people overall. Link down below in the description of this video. So first and foremost, again, nothing matters with AMC. Don't be fooled like this does not matter you shouldn't break a sweat really if 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 you're a viewer of this channel even if you don't agree with what i say what i say should make sense right it should make sense as a possible outcome even if you don't agree with me it should make sense now let me point just one thing out and this is really all i should have to say but let me point it out Obviously, AMC is going to do the reverse split. The stock's going to go, you know, a lot higher, right? You're not going to see gains because you're just going to lose shares and those shares are going to become worth more. You're going to get dilution, potentially knocking the stock down. That's the bear case, right? Well, I've said this before and I sound like I'm beating a dead horse at this point. And I, and, I, and I know I probably am, but I really want these videos to touch as many pe people as possible. The, the guys that have been in or gals that have been in AMC this whole time that have been waiting for something good to happen. Guys, it's about to happen. At least in my personal opinion. I'm not a financial advisor. Come to your own conclusions. All, all of that good jazz. AMC is going to be able to raise billions and billions of dollars of capital. At the time of recording this video, AMC's market cap is $2.31 billion. Now, currently, according to this article, let's go ahead and pull it up. AMC has, a, uh, has assets of $6.58 billion, total liabilities of $5.08 billion, total equity of $1.49 billion. So... They're essentially worth not quite a one-to-one -one ratio, little, obviously a little bit less than that, but close to a one-to-one -one ratio. So it's not like the stock is super expensive, granted, if it gets back to profitability or just not losing as much money. Now, what if I told you AMC could raise five or 10 billion? Well, that means the valuation proposition for AMC is gonna get a lot better quickly as well if the fundamentals continue to get better well that's also going to be a huge positive for amc as long as amc does not continue to burn through hundreds of millions of dollars every quarter i mean them raising money can't be a bearish thing now if amc was just burning through money like nobody's business well you know that raising capital what's it matter if you're just going to burn through it right that's the overall logic of the market now it doesn't look like that's what's happening it looks like amc should should be at a place of break even pretty soon and this upcoming earnings report could be very good as eric wold suggests amc is going to lose less than 10 cents per share potentially even less than that so on 500 million shares currently um do 0 0.10 times just be, we'll be real rough with it. 500 million. That's a loss of about $50 million. Still sizable, but it's not terrible. Now, if AMC can pay down its debt, which servicing AMC's debt is a big reason why they lose a lot of money, right? It, it costs a lot to service $5 billion in debt or a little bit less than that or in the, in the $4.7 billion range. So, AMC is instantly, once they do pay off debt, going to become 
a little bit more profitable. And obviously they're not profitable, but going to see a little bit less of that cash burn, right? So that is obviously going to help. That is going to be a big benefit. And at that point, AMC paying down its debt, having billions in the bank. Sure, you gave up some shares, right? You had to sell some shares. It's still a big positive. Now, a lot of people have pointed this out in the comment section that really no company has done a reverse split in the way that AMC has. This is like trick accounting, more or less. That's why there's a litigation going on right now. A lot of people think that this was wrongdoing. And to some degree, it probably is. Now, I think Adam Aaron and, you know, the executives want to see good things happen with AMC, right? I think they want to cause the shorts to get squeezed out of their short positions. I don't think they exactly like what the shorts have put AMC through in recent years. I think that's a pretty fair conclusion. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they don't give a shit. Maybe they stand to make a lot of money personally off of this. I couldn't tell you, right? Anything's a possibility. But the way that I see it right now, this could be a huge poker move. And I mean poker because, you know, AMC really might have a big bluff going on. And this could be a big reason why the shorts continue to short the stock in the way that they are with legal short interest at almost 30%. This could mean the actual float that is sold short is over 100% if retail is still owning 70, 80% of the float, which I think that's still the case. Well, the actual tradable flow could be massively short and shorts could have a huge problem when AMC stock does rally when the judge makes her final decision. Now, other factors have led to the short score of AMC being at the highest level that we have ever seen. Literally ever. It's never been this squeezable call it that the short score is currently at 95 literally a, a record for amc back in january the short score was 84 and back in june of 2021 the short score was around 77 before amc rally well now it's 95 and it's only gotten higher as as of as of lately ever since really this stock um you know started to sell off in the 20 30 dollar range in 2021 the short scores started to go higher, but even more recently, as you know, far back as, as May 1st, the short score went from 88 to 95. You've seen, you know, the situation look better and better for AMC and a potential short squeeze, right? Again, 28% of the float that's estimated to be sold short, about 29% of the float that was legally sold short with $642.5 million worth of these short positions currently. Now, free flow out and loan sitting at 34.5% and 178.11 million shares that are currently lent out. But the real gold is the days to cover. Days to cover sitting at 10.15. That means the short position, the amount of shares that is sold short continues to grow and the volume has been flat or actually declining with AMC recently. That's just telling you it's going to be harder for shorts to get out of short positions. Right. That's the bottom line. Now, cost of borrow fees, 252%, 100% share utilization Again, this utilization number is bounced back and forth. I think a lot of it has to do with selling and buying of Ape. I think that's getting picked up by Ortex because we really haven't seen too many changes with AMC itself. Now, again, like I mentioned previously, big story is the cost of borrow fees. The shorts did not expect this to last as long as it has. And obviously, after the courts make their ruling, there's going to be a time delay as well from when you actually get the reverse split when you actually get um you know this conversion and that's likely when shorts would cover on their short positions when this conversion happens the story for amc gets massively more bullish so if you're going to cover it's right after the split and i think a lot of people have the same idea so i think right there i mean i i i think that last sentence you guys can relate to that even if you are not in agreement with with what i think and that's okay 
But isn't it pretty clear that this 30% short interest on free float all has the same idea? Short the stock until the conversion after the conversion cover, right? Doesn't, doesn't that make a lot of sense? Isn't that what the logic is? Well, cost of borrow fees from interactive brokers at 975%. And that's currently, that's as of the close of trading on Friday, actually in in after hours at 8 p.m., 975%. Cost to borrow average, 688%. Cost to borrow max, 1,040%. Cost to borrow minimum earlier in the day was sitting at 871%. Currently, it's at about a half percent. Obviously, those numbers are not correct. The best, most accurate numbers you can get for cost to borrow fees is interactive brokers with the short availability. That's really, you know, the the most accurate that you're going to find because those are hedge fund and institutional kind of clients. Now, if we take a look at the option activity, 31 orders totaling $3.8 million, you actually seen a pretty big boost to the bullish option buyers on Friday. Positive order value was 15%. The last week, You've seen 60 orders totaling $35.5 million with a positive order value of 2%. You've seen a July 21st 350 call come in towards the end of the day, about 12 minutes left of the trading day, worth $126,000. A $2 call worth $150,000. A 350 call for July 21st worth worth $166,000. Another $2 call for September 15th worth $148,000. A $6 call for January 19th, 2024, worth $190,000. Um, and then you've seen a 350 call worth $30,000, a 350 call worth $38,000. You get the idea. It's still very negative, right? 15% positive order value is not good if you look at any other stock, but it's a lot better than what we have seen, you know, recently. And even the open interest for next week is a lot better than what we have seen as of recently as well. Open interest on the call side, 37.88%. Open interest on the put side at 62%. A lot better than what we have seen recently. And even for next week, again, that's a lot better than what we're seeing for the following week. For July 28th, 18% open interest on the call side. August 4th, 18% open interest on the call side. August 11th, 23%. August 18th, 23%. Maybe that does mean in this upcoming week, you might get some very good news from the courts. That is most certainly a possibility. And that is something that I am starting to look forward to. Not to mention things such as the put to call ratio being at by far the most extreme levels. Guys, if there's one thing you ever learn from this channel, let it be this. When everyone is so negative or so bullish or optimistic on a stock, nine times out of 10, 900 times out of 800, out of 905 times, you, you get the idea, you get what I'm trying, trying to say. It's not going to go that direction. Simply put, not everyone can win. And this is still something that Wall Street analysts can't figure out. Hedge funds, institutions can't figure out because they don't understand the markets the same way that you and I do. You just can't all be right. You can't all win here. This would be a different story if, they, if, if some people were bullish and it was neutral. It's not. It's far from it by far this is the most pessimistic anyone has been on amc even when amc was you know before this dilution at 70 dollars per share back in june of 2021 there was more people bullish on amc then than now and that just logically speaking should not happen right that sh literally should not happen but it's happening all of these things lead me to be pretty dang positive. Not to mention, for a short squeeze and a massive rally, you've already seen a lot of stocks going through short squeezes, such as Carvana, such as Rivian recently. These stocks have rallied over 100% in days, right? This market environment where the Fed is finally what looks to be almost done raising rates, inflation is falling off a cliff, and it looks like we're going back to an 
easier stance of monetary policy, the markets are more lenient to actually let stocks rally. You didn't see a lot of short squeezes in 2022 and the first month or two of 2023. Recently, though, things have become a little bit more accommodative. And I think that does ultimately help AMC when the rally does happen. Now, we didn't even cover on other factors such as potential FOMO, just buying the stock, buying the options, or what the psychology will be when your investors start to look at AMC and say, hey, what just happened with AMC? The stock is now $20, $30 per share had a reverse split well maybe that could lead to an upside move especially if the stock is already rallying as i expect it will these things could feed into each other and create an even bigger rally an even bigger problem for the short so this is some of the things that i am thinking about right now these are some of the things that you should know or at least have a heads up on heading into this next upcoming week again this could happen this week it might not it might be months from now hard to tell and the judge made it very clear that we're not going to get a heads up to when she does make her final ruling. So that is going to do it for this video. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. Again, if you guys want to come trade with me live in real time, link down below in the description of this video, as well as check out Weeble if you have not done so already. Deposit $1, get yourself 15 free stocks, throw a couple free stocks my way. It is by far the best way to support the channel right now that you can do and continue to make these videos possible. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.